So today, I've got something that's just gonna blow your mind. Google is gearing up to completely revolutionize the industry with this new AI they've been working on, and it goes by the name of Gemini. It's seriously next-level stuff, rivaling ChatGPT and Mighty GPT-4 in terms of understanding and generating natural language. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss out on this one, so make sure you stick around till the end of the video. Now, what's Gemini all about? Well, this is Google's latest project in the world of large language models. The full form is Generalized Multimodal Intelligence Network, and it's basically this mega-powerful AI system that can handle multiple types of data and tasks all at once. We're talking text, images, audio, video, even 3D models and graphs, and tasks like question answering, summarization, translation, captioning, sentiment analysis, and so on. But here's the deal. Gemini isn't just one single model. It's an entire network of models all working together to deliver the best results possible. All right, now how Gemini works. So basically, Gemini uses a brand new architecture that merges two main components, a multimodal encoder and a multimodal decoder. The encoder's job is to convert different types of data into a common language that the decoder can understand. Then the decoder takes over generating outputs in different modalities based on the encoded inputs and the task at hand. Say, for instance, the input is an image and the task is to generate a caption. The encoder would turn the image into a vector that captures all its features and meaning, and the decoder would then generate a text output that describes the image. Now, what sets Gemini apart and makes it special is that Gemini has several advantages when compared to other large language models like GPT-4. First off, it is just more adaptable. It can handle any type of data and task without needing specialized models or any sort of fine-tuning. Plus, it can learn from any domain and dataset without being boxed in by predefined categories or labels. So, compared to other models that are trained on specific domains or tasks, Gemini can tackle new and unseen scenarios much more efficiently. Then there's the fact that Gemini is just more efficient in general. It uses fewer computational resources and memory than other models that need to deal with multiple modalities separately. Also, it uses a distributed training strategy, which means it can make the most out of multiple devices and servers to speed up the learning process. And honestly, the best part is that Gemini can scale up to larger datasets and models without compromising its performance or quality, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. If we talk about size and complexity, one of the most common things people look at to measure a large language model is its parameter count, right? So basically, parameters are numerical variables that serve as the learned knowledge of the model, enabling it to make predictions and generate text based on the input it receives. Generally speaking, more parameters mean more potential for learning and generating diverse and accurate outputs, but having more parameters also means you need more computational resources and memory to train and use the model. Now, GPT-4 has 1 trillion parameters, which is about 6 times bigger than GPT-3.5 with its 175 billion parameters. That makes GPT-4 one of the biggest language models ever made. For Gemini, Google has said that it comes in four sizes, Gecko, Otter, Bison, and Unicorn. They haven't given us the exact parameter count for each size, but based on some hints, we can guess that Unicorn is the largest and probably similar to GPT-4 in terms of parameters, maybe a bit less. Oh, and by the way, I gotta mention this before I show you a few examples of what it can do. I must say that Gemini is more interactive and creative than other LMs. It can churn out outputs in different modalities based on what the user prefers, and it can even generate novel and diverse outputs that aren't bound by existing data or templates. For example, Gemini could whip up original images or videos based on text descriptions or sketches. It could also create stories or poems based on images or audio clips. Now let's discuss how Gemini tackles tasks that are more diverse and extensive compared to GPT-4. Allow me to share a few examples. One impressive capability of Gemini is its multimodal question answering. This involves questions that encompass various data types such as text and images. For instance, you might inquire about the author of a book while displaying its cover image or ask for the name of an animal while showing a picture of the creature. 
Gemini adeptly responds by combining its abilities in understanding both textual and visual information. Another remarkable feat is its multimodal summarization. Imagine having information comprised of different data types, like text and audio. For instance, you might aim to summarize a podcast episode or a news article by generating a concise text summary or an audio summary. Gemini excels at this by leveraging its comprehension skills in both textual and auditory realms. Then there's multimodal translation, which comes into play when you need to translate information involving multiple data types, like text and video. Consider a scenario where you require subtitles for a video lecture or a movie trailer in another language. Gemini handles this seamlessly by utilizing its expertise in textual and visual translation. Moreover, multimodal generation is another capability wherein you aim to create information involving diverse data types, like text and images. For example, generating an image based on a textual description or sketch, or vice versa, producing text based on an image or a video clip. Once again, Gemini shines by harnessing its skills in both textual and visual generation. However, the most impressive aspect, in my opinion, is Gemini's prowess in multimodal reasoning. This ability allows it to combine information from various data types and tasks to draw assumptions. For instance, presenting it with a movie clip enables Gemini to answer complex questions like identifying the main theme of the movie. Through multimodal reasoning, Gemini synthesizes information from multiple sources, identifying recurring patterns, character interactions, and uncovering hidden messages or meanings. This results in a comprehensive understanding of the movie's essence, its main idea or message. To me, this capability is truly mind-blowing. These examples only scratch the surface of what Gemini can achieve. Its immense potential suggests incredible power and versatility in this technology. So, what does this mean for the future of AI? It's evident to me that Google's multimodal approach with Gemini poses a significant challenge to GPT-4, and perhaps even to GPT-5, in the years to come. This advancement also hints at the likelihood of witnessing more applications and services, leveraging Gemini's capabilities to offer enhanced user experiences and innovative solutions. We might expect more personalized assistants capable of understanding and responding in various modalities, or creative tools aiding in generating diverse content or ideas. In conclusion, these thoughts are based on my research, readings, and observations. I hope this video has been informative, offering you new insights. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.